guys, welcome back. It's your favorite Gamble the Limp, and I'm here with the next part of 1918, Brother Against Brother. We're going to pick up right where we left off, right in the middle of the January round. We've only got a couple of cards left for each side to play out. Then we're going to add in our February cards and just keep going with it and play a few more rounds and uh, see how this game kind of pans out. Remember, we've got the Communist forces here in the South and the... Uh, democratic, I guess, government forces here in the north, and they're trying to gain control of the strategic towns. Red wins if they take Vasa, the one town over here controlled by the white guys, and uh, white has to take all the uh, strategic towns. Historically, they did, but uh, looking at it, it just does not seem like white starts off at a very good place. The red greatly outnumbers them, and they're getting ready to greatly outnumber them even worse. So, I don't know, depending on how this plays out, maybe the historical variant would make it a little more even because it seems like red is a little bit stronger. But, of course, the German forces aren't involved yet, and they are very, very strong units, so maybe they'll change things up. Now, remember, we're going to take and play cards to get activations, and I was looking at the couple of cards I got left for the white forces. They're the next ones to go, and they're not really anything special. I don't think they're going to help too much. So I'm going to take and use one of them just basically for its points up here at the top. So I've got two points that I can spend. Set this out of the way. And that means I can activate two of the towns and the units that are involved. And I was thinking about it. Am I going south to try to do stuff with the units that are down here? Because these guys are going to get quickly wiped out down here in the south. So I kind of would like to do something with them so they at least you know aren't wasted but there's a thing in the rules about reinforcements and that happens after each round so uh january february february march uh that you get reinforcements and your reinforcements are based on how many strategic towns you control so for white they really need to take another town so i'm looking up here and i'm hoping to get though that's only one red unit up here wiped out so what i'm actually going to do is i'm going to activate this town and i'm going to activate this town up here because looking at our board getting i could activate this unit and bring up and have a combat factor of six or i can activate this one and this one have a combat factor of five there's no difference i don't have a benefit by having that one extra combat factor and I don't, if I had three points, I could activate all three and get a combat factor of seven, which would be a benefit for me. Uh, I'm not going to have that. And actually, that would guarantee me control uh, of this. So we're going to do it that way. And there are these little tokens that you can use to signify it's red on one side and white on the other to signify which towns that you've activated. It's just kind of like a little mnemonic token to help you remember. Uh, but I'm not going to worry about it on ones like this where we know exactly what we're activating. Sorry about that. I had to take a sec to cut down my damn phone because it seemed like that was the moment. Everyone had to message me all of a sudden. All right, so we're going to activate here. We're going to activate here. Both of these towns are going to move their units up. That's going to get them surrounding, and they're each going to attack in to here. We've got two units each. Uh, ah, no, I'm dropping them. Two units, full powered, fully manned units here. That gives us four combat factors. And then one uh, partially manned unit here. That gives us only one combat factor. Uh, doesn't matter. We're good. We've got five total attacking in here into this strategic town of Ulu. <laughs> I hope I'm pronouncing that right. And they only have a defensive strength of two. So looking over here at our chart, the attackers on the uh, top chart... I have a strength of five, so I'll be rolling on this column. If I get a three or higher, they're just wiped out, and I'm good. The defenders have a strength of two, and they're going to need a three or higher just to do uh, one damage to me. But if they get five or higher, they'll get two damage, which would be bad. I, I don't mind suffering one and just losing the unit there at the top, but we'll have to see what happens. Roll our dice here. I need big money for, uh, big money for the whites. Because otherwise, this is going to be bad. I really need to take this town. Ooh, six and two. This is actually great for the white uh, side. They completely wipe out the uh, forces. They actually got three uh, combat results. So that more than wipes that unit out. 
and a result of two for the Reds is actually no effect, so they don't lose anything. Uh, I can consolidate forces down up to three units, can be moved into a town after it's been uh, wiped out. If you are the attacker and you have one more hit than the defenders do, the defenders have to retreat. If they can't retreat due to stacking limits or there is no path of retreat, as in there wouldn't be with here, uh, they are basically surrender. They're destroyed at that point. So this actually worked out perfectly for us. We will move the one down. I'm not moving those guys in because there's nothing up here to control. I need to activate those guys later and move them down. And I probably could have taken them with less if I uh, only sent one unit instead of the uh, other instead of two because I would have been rolling on the 3-4 table, but I just wanted to guarantee taking that town because now when I do reinforcements, the white side's going to get a lot more and they are definitely going to need those reinforcements because the next card for the red guys is going to be a brutal one. Which one was I doing here? It is, I think it's this one. Yep. Okay, here's what we're doing. Place four fully manned red guards in any red towns that have unbroken railway connection to Russia. You can only place two new red guards in each town. This one, of course, is a star card, which means we do not get to keep it. It has to go away. So we'll take and flick that over there. We'll grab our little container here full of red units. We'll grab out four of these guys. Now, when they say Russia, what they mean is this little block down over here to the right. So it has to have a red slash line connecting it uh, to this block to put those units in it. This one, of course, is a white unit, so does not count. They have control all the way down over here, but I can place them in any of these towns uh, that, have, that are connected by rail all the way in. So... There is a strategic town there. So I'm going to put two units here on top of that strategic town, giving me a full stack there on a town that needs to be controlled. And then we will take and actually place the other two right next to them. Uh, this way we're guarding that town. We're going to be attacking over here and clearing out these uh, white forces. But this way they can possibly push up or even just hold here and keep the white forces from consolidating coming down into that strategic strong point. So that takes care of the red units and now we are back to the white side. We only got one card left. I am again playing it for, uh, for its points. So just two points, which means I actually do keep the card. And I was thinking about this earlier. It's like, okay, where am I going to activate? And it's debating between consolidating my northern forces to take and block them off from, you know, just cutting in on me. But I think I'm going to be able to do that with, you know, some reinforcement forces here on the February turn. So I might take and just try to do a little damage where I can. And where would I do that? Let's see. Because this is a... They only have two? Yeah. And they're, the penalty for attacking into a fortification is... What is the penalty for attacking into a fortification? Um, the attacker receives a negative column shift and the defender receives a positive column shift. Ooh, that's actually a big penalty because I was thinking I might do that. But they would have a combat strength of four on the defenders, which would bump them up actually into five, six, which is bad. And if I moved this guy and activated that one, I would only have a strength of three, drop down to two. At most, I could do one damage to him, which is almost nothing. So we need to attack somewhere else. Where can we go to do some damage? I want to just try to hurt someone. Okay. You know, like just hurt some of their forces. Take out something down here. Let's take and activate here. And we'll go... One, two, two movement points for moving across the road, and then three. He's got a total of three movement points he can use. We'll move him there so he can attack this uh, half-manned force here. And we will take and activate here as well so he can attack over this rail line that's connecting these two points. So here and here will be our two activated towns. 
and we'll just attack these single units. And this is just trying to weaken their forces a little bit uh, to reduce the amount they have. Because you remember with the red guys, I was trying to build up a little bit of force here to try to kind of uh, swing in towards their capital. So let's take and we'll roll for this one first right here. Combat strength of two, not too big. Uh, combat strength of one and there's no other factors affecting it. They're attacking across a rail line so they're not even getting penalized uh, for the road. So we just have to roll on it and compare on the chart to see what happens. All right, big numbers and I'm dropping stuff over here. And Ooh, three for buff, interesting, okay. Under two, three, oh, the attackers get nothing and the defenders get nothing. There is no hit, so strength of one, strength of two. That is nothing across the board. So moot point, oh well, we'll conduct our attack over here. Those two have both have a strength of two. So they are actually even on this one. Let's see what they get. Six and three, so good for the white guys. Uh, two, uh, only one damage. So they do get flipped and a three for the defenders does one damage. So they both end up being flipped since they both suffered one hit. There is no retreat on the white side uh, or there's no retreat on the red side rather since the attackers did not gain one more hit. Ah, they, uh, the defenders would have had to have whiffed completely to have been forced to retreat. But at least I did a little damage and weakened uh, the forces that were there. Oh, or could I have? No, I couldn't. I was thinking, could I have attacked up into that? But no, I could have. All right, so now we're to the red guy's turn. Okay, so the board state will look a little bit different at this point. I'll explain it here in just a sec. We're going to take and play the last card that we have for January for the uh, red guard forces. They're going to keep this one because I'm playing it just for its point cost because this one would have given them reinforcements like the other, but it would have put reinforcements in three towns here, here, and here. Two of those towns actually are already fully stacked, so I wouldn't get the reinforcements there. I'd only get one unit, so it's not that uh, useful. So we're going to play it for four activations. Uh, one thing I did forget to mention previously, when these guys moved out to conduct that attack, uh, this town is actually still controlled because they were the last ones to pass through it. And I actually think that one's still controlled by them because they've passed through it and they've gained ownership of those towns. It's not a big deal, but uh, it does come into play when a unit has to retreat. They can't retreat into an enemy controlled town. They would actually have to move a unit in there first, regain control, and then it's a retreat path for them. I also took and placed out uh, activation markers since I'm activating four towns so I could keep track of where I was activating units. Over here on the left side of the board, I'm activating these three because we're going to take and move up right here. Oh, and I missed uh, something. I missed that that was a road and these guys are reduced, so they're not going to have the ability to get there because they only have two movement points. Ah, well, we'll stick with it. So these guys activate in there. I could be able to do much. So we'll just take that off. I was thinking at first they would be up here in there, uh, that zone. Give me a combat factor of five. That way I could attack up and try to take these guys out, start building up some forces here to try to move into Vasa. But uh, that's all right. We still have two fully stocked units. We'll go after them, uh, see what we can get going on. Down here, I activated these guys so they could go after this one weakened unit. Go ahead and take them out. And then over here, that's a fully strength, uh, fully manned rather, unit, but it's cut off from its supply sources. There is no strategic town that has a connection to this guy. It's all passing through white territory. So if I don't attack with him now, he's automatically going to reduce at the end of the turn. I might as well do something with him while I can. So we'll go ahead and start there. And which way do we want to attack? Well, let's actually attack this way because I got forces here and if I end up winning then they can try to consolidate and maybe have a little foothold and that should actually give them a connection to a uh, city so this guy would not actually reduce. So we'll conduct that attack. This town was not activated though so he does not get to contribute. So it's a combat factor of two against a defending factor of one. So not big numbers just yet. Let's see what happens. 
Oh, and the red guy's coming through. So look at this. The the attackers are doing great. Uh, attacker two, six, or rolling a six. He got one. So the white guy is eliminated. Let's throw him into his thing. A two on a one. No results. So, boom. And since they did cause one more hit, they do get to advance up. So he has taken this town. And we will place... A marker here to signify that they still own technically that town so that actually worked out really well for him now he opened up a supply line down to one of the strategic towns and he's not going to get reduced here at the end of this turn we'll go ahead and conduct our attack down here the two units combat factor of four are attacking into this defensive strength of one just clearing out some of these white forces they're still down here at the bottom so we'll go ahead and roll for them the attackers are on the four column defenders are on the one column and ooh, that's going to be pretty bad attacker on four he rolled a five he got two results or two hits so he definitely took him out the defenders got a four on a one which does cause one damage but these guys do get to advance up because they did cause one more hit so they will move up just so they gain control of that town. But hey, at least they did a little damage on their way out. All right, takes care of that one. Uh, I'm not going to mark this as controlled. Basically, anything south of the dotted line uh, is automatically going to be considered red unless a white force has captured it and then vice versa for the top side. And then we have one more to take care of over here. And yeah, we're going to go ahead and attack and see if we can do it. We are attacking across a road, though. If you see, connecting this town to that town is a um, road, not a rail line. And that does cause a combat modifier. And let's do, 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 where is it? Where is it? Where's the road? Thing? Yep. All right. So attacking across a road causes you to subtract two from your die result unless you have a German or a Jaeger force uh, present in the attack. They're not, but the Red's going to take the risk anyway since it is such a low uh, defensive unit there, but they're going to lose two on whatever they roll here. They've got four combat strength. They're rolling on their four column. One again for the defenders. Let's see what they get. Ooh, defenders come out swinging, and they only got a one on this. No result for the attackers. And for the defenders, the defenders, oh my god, are you serious? They got two results? Oh, that's brutal. That is brutal. That shows you right there that the uh, combat table is definitely in the favor of the defenders because they are able to get two results like that with only one combat strength. So that is something to consider. Ooh, that was actually bad for them. I went ahead and just removed one whole unit because the uh, the two results, I could either reduce both those guys to half or reduce uh, remove one whole unit to account for the two results. I'd rather just lose a whole unit than have two half guys there because there's no way to bring a unit back up to fully manned with the exception of the events on the cards. You can't just move uh, two half manned uh, units together to make a fully manned unit they stay reduced so it doesn't behoove me to have weakened units across the board i want to be able to stack them up uh, as much as possible so that attack did not work very well for me yeah see why you don't want to attack across roads all right that actually completes our first round give me a sec i'm going to take and get the uh, card set up for the second round and we'll start up okay we're back and ready to go for our next turn uh, we're at the end of the January phase. We're picking up. So we've got to do our reinforcements and our uh, supply check. So the way supply is going to work, like I said before, you trace it from any of the strategic towns. And as long as your unit is connected in some way back to one of these strategic towns, you're good to go. Uh, most of my northern white units should be fine. They can trace lines all the way this one actually cannot but he is already reduced and if they're already reduced that's not going to affect it uh, so those guys are fine these guys actually did open up a line 
uh, down here so that saved him from getting reduced uh, he would be flipped down to not fully manned had they not had that happen I think this white force will not be able to trace because yep there's that that he can trace down this way but it comes over there so yep he will get uh, reduced down cannot trace to any of these strategic towns obviously under their control uh, not just any town this one's already reduced he can trace back and that one's already reduced so yeah it only uh only had one unit get reduced down not the not the biggest thing in the world but we'll have to deal with it now rem uh, actually i'll touch on the cards here in a sec i do have the reinforcement guys already uh set across over here thanks to gaining this town that changed things up for the white forces you'll see this tells you what reinforcements that you're going to get the white guys get one Jaeger unit and civil guards three times the number of strategic towns under uh, the player's control. Since the white forces were able to get that second town, they get six units total rather than uh, the three that they would have received had they not taken that town. The Jaeger unit, though, has to spawn in either Vasa or Olu up over here i'm going to put it down in vasa and you can see the jaeger unit is strong it is a four four unit so four movement points and four on their attack they're worth two civil guards so you can see how getting some of those on the board will really start to change things up other than that they did get the six units and i'm trying to decide where i'm going to go with this these guys can be placed in any town north of that dotted line that is in their control and I'm thinking since I know which strategy <laughs> my guys are going to go with that I'm going to have to put some reinforcements over here. So we'll put two there to beef that up. And then where do I need forces? I need forces in a lot of different places. Actually, if I put some here, that will block off some of the stuff they've got going on over there. So... I'll tell you what, we will put three forces here, which will then block the supply line. Actually, I need to check. I think I check supply first in the order. Because I'm thinking if I do reinforcements first, then that actually cuts them off. But I, yep, supply then reinforcements. So that's not going to affect them. So that actually cuts off their supply line. Hopefully we can hold that, force them to reduce later on. And I've got one more unit here. Where do I want to place them? Maybe here in the fort, but they're not going to attack the fort anyway. Well, I say they, I, I am not going to attack the fort. Where do we want to go? Maybe over here to keep them from bunching up or up there to kind of build up the forces. I don't know. There's so many options. Where to go? Oh, uh, yeah, I'm thinking here because... This unit could move up and they could try to tag team uh, this stack that way. But even if they broke through, I've got a big stack over here. So I might bring those guys around. And I know I'm activating Vasa later to come this direction. So, so yeah, 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 we're good there. Now I've got 12, 12 of red guys to take and activate or put down. Because they get four times for February the number of strategic towns under their control. They have three, so they get 12 units. And in this round, they get the armored trains arrive. And the way it works is, like I was saying before, you have some cards that are removed from the game if you play them for their effect. But if not, they go off to the side if you play them for their points, and they'll get shuffled back in. Then you're going to take and draw up eight cards in each round after the first. It's eight cards, eight turns for each side. It's just specifying that this card specifically has to be in the red guy's hands. And they get to place three armored trains in these towns and up to two trains per town. Those armored trains are a beast. So they're going to have that available or five points to activate, which is huge too. So... Let's see, where are they going to place forces? They've got a lot of forces to place. Uh, since they got to take Vasa to win, I see no reason not to take and place some forces here to take and beef that up. And where?
where else do we want to go? Actually, let me check. I want to make sure. I know you. there's a limit on how many you can put in a town. Uh, sometimes when we reinforce them, but I should be able to put this to the stack limit. Yeah, I'm fine to place them in any supply town. Uh, there's no limit to how many I can place in the town except for the stacking limit itself, which is three. So I'm thinking I'll bunch these guys up. Where are we going to go? Well, I know I want to build my forces back up here on the left side where we're trying to go after Vasa. And what I'm thinking for the red guys is if they can push through this way and this way and get it to where they're over here and over here so they can tag team this strong point to keep or to try to get in there on Vasa, they can gain control. So I'll place those there. I got two more stacks to place. And since there's a big stack here, I probably definitely want to prepare against that. Let's see. Is there a connection there? Yep, there's a little road connecting these guys. So maybe, do I want to go there? Yeah, we'll, we'll put these guys here, build up a large amount of forces. So there we have them. And then maybe one other spot. But where do we want to go? Where do we want to go? Because we're so stacked out. Maybe I'll just build up some of these forces here along the border. Yeah, we'll place one guy there, another guy there, and then actually another right here on this strategic town. Bunch it up to the max. There we go. Now we look at this. We've got a line of forces all along that border got them uh, held back and then all along over here. And there's just a few white guys down here that really can't do anything. I mean, they would have to bunch together just to get a combat factor of three and they've got so many units in between them. I don't think it's gonna do very much. So that takes care of that. We got our units placed out. I think we're good to go to start uh, the next part. All right, all right. Uh, I was thinking about it since the video is already probably getting a little bit long since I've had a lot going on. I'm just going to play a card for each side for the start of the February turn and then we'll pick up again with the next one. So I'm going to play this one for the white. The white always start the round off. This is a card that has a star but it's a little bit different. I had to read through some of the cards to figure out which event I wanted to go with and I like this one because it gives the whites a defensive bonus. Uh, put this card in front of you. You can use this card anytime after the red player has announced an attack and selected the attacking units. You get a plus two to the defensive roll. That is excellent. Roll the die after using this card. If you roll a one to two, remove the card from the game. If you roll three to six, you can use this card again. Keep the card in front of you. So if you get lucky with your rolls, you can keep using this card over and over again uh, until you roll a one or two and keep getting those plus two to the defensive bonuses, which would be huge uh, for the white forces. So I'm going to place this right in the center of the board because I will forget it otherwise. All right. I can't believe I did this. I should have checked it beforehand, but... I was going to play this one, of course, to, uh, first off, the armored trains arrive because that gives you three armored trains that you can place out across the board. Problem with that is it they go in three very specific towns that I didn't bother to check beforehand. One of them being Helsinki, which is fine because it's only got two units, but the other two towns are the other two strongholds or strong point cities they control. And both of those now have three units in them, the stacking limit, which means if I play this card, I only get one armored train. So I don't want to waste the card for one train. I have to take and move those guys out. So I'm going to hold on to this card for later use. And just to take and get myself um, uh, to a to stopping point, I'm playing just a quick card here. Uh, for the red guys, place one fully manned red guard in a town that is controlled by a red player and has an uninterrupted... Ah, uh, railway connection to Russia. So I it does not have the star. I can take and place this over to the side and use it again on a following turn. And it gets me one free unit. So no problem. I'll take the one free unit, even though the reds are getting kind of stacked across the board here and just place it down here as an extra reinforcement. Or actually, no, I'll stack it here because that has an uninterrupted line all the way down here to Russia, railway line and there are white forces here, so that uh, beefs them up a little bit. All right, that takes care of this part. 
we will take and play through some more cards for the February round. I'm probably going to try to burn out February and then I'll probably call it and do another video for uh, final thoughts at that point uh, telling you about the game. All right, that's going to be it for me. Hope you guys enjoyed this one. Y'all take care and I'll catch you in the next one.